any kind of, uh, of feature film. Um, and we support approximately 40 to 45 uh, films every year. And uh, for instance, uh, among the films we supported, 16 of them are selected this year in Cannes Film Festival. So it's really for art house films, okay? It's very, it's very selective, it's for art house film. Uh, but when you get this support, then very often uh, it, uh, it opens other doors because as the, 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 it's very, very uh, now famous, uh, then when a film gets the support, very often it gets other supports, other, either public in some other countries or private with uh, private money from distributors, sale agents, uh, TV channels, uh, platforms. Uh, well. Concerning the USA, as there is no cooperation agreement with France, now there are two possibilities. Either it's a, let's say, commercial movie, and then you have to go to trip and to find a French uh, line producer and to have access to the tax rebate. Or if it's a small independent movie that will be shot in the US, then you can uh, find a French co-producer. It will not be an official co-production. So the film officially will be American, not American and French, just American, but it can have access to our selective scheme, Cinéma du Monde. And we have supported, uh, I think, four, Amer four small uh, independent American films. For instance, uh, two years ago in, the, in Cannes, there was uh, Port Authority, uh, by Daniel Lesovitz, a female filmmaker from New York. Uh, she, she worked with a French producer and they co-produced this film. It was supported by, by uh, France, by public money from France. And it was in Cannes in Un Certain Regard. Uh, so as the film was shot in the US, it was not possible to have access to tax rebate in France, but you can have access to public money. Uh, now, so is it is it clear? So that, that's for for the countries with which France doesn't have a cooperation agreement. Uh, the choice is quite easy. Either it's very art house film shot in the country of the director, and then you can try to get Cinema du Monde, or it's a more commercial movie, or uh, a, a, a movie which will spend a lot of money in France. In that case, you, you you've got to go to trip. I, I came, you told me to come, I came. <laughs> um, at which stage can you apply for the Cinema du Monde? At which stage? Before shooting. Would, before shooting. Okay. Before shooting. And then, uh, so if you are supported, everything is all right. If you are not supported, but you succeed in making the film, then you can come back with a rough cut and ask for post-production support, which is the less money because well, before shooting, uh, on average, it's 130,000 euros. No, most of the films we support are low budget films uh, between uh, 1 million and 2 million euros. But some of them might be uh, bigger. But on, on, but for as I was talking about the American films we supported, they, they were quite uh, low budget. They were approximately around 1 million dollars or 1 million euros. Um, so, but you cannot go directly to post-production support. You have no. to, to make the whole cycle. So you ask before shooting, and if you don't get it, then you can ask for post-production support. So you can start at script stage? Yeah, but full script. Full script, yeah. We need a full script in French. That's the reason why they yeah. you need a French uh, co-producer, because they are used to making the applications to the CNC. Uh, and they, of course, we if, the, if it's a Google translation... Uh, no. No, no chance to be supported because the, the members of the committee don't like it. So it's important to have a, a full script with a good translation and to have also um, uh, notes of intent by the producer and the director also in French explaining the project. Uh, it's very important. And also, of course, you can send visuals, uh, previous films, short or feature films that the director made before so that the commission might see them and uh, see uh, the talent of the director. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask with the, with the Cinéma du Monde. So you apply to Cinéma du Monde through a local producer in France. Mm. How does that tie in with uh, Film France? 
in that case, there is no real implication of in France. Okay. It's really run by us, CNC and Institut Français. Uh, the money goes to the French producer, the, the subsidy. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, soft money, it's not refundable, it's uh, soft money. And then the French producer has to spend only half of the money in France or on French expenses, and the rest can be sent to, to the main country of production. Okay, so it's really interesting in terms of money because uh, yes, the the we're not very demanding in terms of uh, of feedback. It's just fifty percent of the money in France, and the rest can be sent uh, any anywhere. Uh, but it's it's um, we, we don't receive that many applications from from the U.S. Uh, because I think in the U.S. Uh, a lot of producers uh, don't know, in fact, uh, even don't even know the existence of, of Cinema du Monde because uh, it's another world. I mean, uh, the idea of public money supporting films uh, is just uh, something very European and very French. <laughs> 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 so, uh, but so I think the producers of the film I mentioned, uh, Port Authority, there was also a film by uh, Matthew Porterfield, uh, Solace Point. And they were very happy to get it, and uh, and they were in major festivals, and uh, and, and and this money was uh, really essential to, to 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 make the film, because uh, they were low budget. So even with 120 or 130 thousand euros, it it can seem not that high, but compared to the budget of the film, it's uh, it's. it's uh, Okay, um, I'm working on two projects that we, we want to shoot in France. Um, we've, we've talked about it, right? So, but it, at this moment, it feels a bit like a mystery to me about how to find um, French co-producers to work with. I, I just haven't been able to, to find a, a, a process for doing that. Um, and I wonder... I mean, I'm running out of time. I'm leaving on the 15th. And um, I've been trying, it's not my only focus, but I've been trying to figure out um, who we might work with on these projects. I'm not still not sure how to, how to make that happen. Okay, so in, in, your, in that case, it would be, a, you're looking for a line producer, in fact, and to have access to tax rebates. No. No? No, really? I'm looking to, uh, you know, I'm yeah. I'm um, a British national. There are two projects that we want to shoot in um, France. I have a Belgian co-producer. He doesn't, and he's done like 40 projects, and he still doesn't have a solid French partner. So it's just really a bit confusing for me. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what you can do, we know, we are not, uh, from a deontological point of view, we're not allowed to give you an advice about one name, one person, particular producer, what okay. we can do, we can send you the list of, for, for instance, as, for, as far as CNC is concerned, all the producers uh, who got Cinema du Monde, uh, all the French producers who were in, in, uh, implicated in films which got Cinema du Monde, and uh, the list is quite big because uh, it's something Well, like we, we're happy to work through that list. 200 if we, producers. If we can get a list, then we'll work yeah, through sure. it. Yeah, sure. If you, you give me your card, I, I can okay. send you the list. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Uh, you, there is a list of all the films supported with the na with the name of the company, mm. uh, not necessarily the precise contact points. Yeah, but, uh, we, we should uh, we're, we're going to work on that. Yeah. What's the name of this place just here? Pip or something? The there's a pl uh, tent just there with lots of artisans that are French. The ah. producers. Oh, spi spi. SPI, SPI. Uh, SPI, it's uh, one of the main uh, producers association in France. And you hearing that, buddy? Uh, yeah. SPI, you went there? We went there and we were told that they couldn't help us find producers. No list? They didn't offer the list? Hmm, wow. Because they are, they, uh, it's uh, well, one of the biggest associations and they, uh, they mainly make art house films. Uh, you know, the indip uh, SPI. Uh, I uh, stand for uh, independent, so uh, normally the small independent companies making art house films, mostly. Gotcha. Uh, my uh, next, uh, gosh, this is loud. My next question, if I could take us back, we were talking about having a, a co-production of any kind. What is the standard percentage that a co-producer would take? You know, could what would their uh, 
there's, there's, of the there's project. There's no standard, but if you so if you are into an official crop production, so with a country with which France has a crop production agreement, then these agreements um, stipulate uh, the minimum percentage of the minority crop producer. So it might be very often it's twenty percent. Sometimes it can go down to ten percent. In some old agreements, it's still thirty percent, but mostly it's twenty percent. And now the, the agreements we sign now, uh, it's generally speaking 20% with possibility of derogation down to 10% if both national authorities agree. Now, uh, then between producers, between private companies, you do whatever you, you want uh, in the respect of that. Uh, uh, now, if it's not a, a official crop production, for example, for Cinema du Monde, in fact, if the budget is below 2.5 million euros, it doesn't have to be in the framework of a crop production agreement. And the film doesn't have to be certified as an official crop production. So, I take two examples. Uh, any American movie so can go to Cinema du Monde provided the budget is below 2.5 million euros. Okay? Uh, and then the My share... My budget just got lowered. <laughs> <laughs> the budget? My budget just got lowered. Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. And then um, uh, the share of the French producer in this, in, in this case is totally free. It might be even 5%. The only thing is that if if you get the support, then we give money to the French producer, and it has to make some expenses in France. And normally, the sh the, the percentage of the uh, expenses is proportional to the um, to the percentage of the financing. So if if, if the the the, pr the French producer uh, brings only five percent uh, of the of the financing, then probably there will be very low spending in France, and then it will be difficult for the producer to spend half of our subsidy in France. Uh, so, it's in, in fact it, it's uh, something. It's a balance to find uh, for the sake of the film between uh, the producers, and uh, it depends, of course, on wh where it is shot, uh, who, who will be the crew, the cast, and everything. Uh, but it, it, it's not uh, it, it's not very difficult in, 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 because, as I said, if it's not in, in an official cooperation agreement, then it's really free. Uh, the the French or the share uh, the, the the share of the French producer can be five percent, ten percent, fifty percent. In some cases, some films are French majority. In fact, um, uh, for especially with rather with low-income countries, in fact, but. Uh, uh, it's maybe possible for a small independent American movie, for instance, to if the director is already uh, uh, somebody a bit well known. For instance, uh, I take the examples of these people, Matthew Porterfield or Daniel Lesovitz. They they had films in Cannes, so next film uh, can find they can find private money in France, probably an MG from a distributor or. Uh, sale agent uh, plus if you get cinema du monde so it it, it it means that the french share of the film maybe can be quite high uh, and in that case the french percentage can be maybe 30 percent or 40 percent even if the film is shot in the us uh, but uh, in some cases of course because generally speaking for films which go to cinema du monde the films are shot in the country of the director with a local crew with a local cast so the french spending is post-production in most cases. So uh, either the entire post-production or the sound or, uh, or uh, VFX, uh, it depends. Mm -hmm. okay. Great, thank you. So it could be a French actor. And give the money to, just the money could go to an actor. The, the, the spend in France could be to an actor? No. Uh, okay. No, not, not it has to, act to be post. Not to actors. No. Uh, to, to uh, to the crew, to uh, equipment, um, uh, to any kind of technical uh, spanning, uh, not to not to the cast. Yeah. Um, and when we shoot in France, I'm from Germany, for example, um, then it's part we can apply for CNC, and of course we need the French service production company there anyway. 
So, oh, it's only just for the crew, the tech, the staff. So what are we talking about? about because location, I, have, I, I, I have said, mm. so is, is it, mm. are you looking for tax rebate or for uh, I'm uh, just trying to figure out to understand your system. <laughs> <It's not laughs> because once again, it's, it's, uh, it is all dessert. So either you go to tax rebate and then it's automatic money. It's automatic money. You, the more you spend, the more you get. Okay. But you don't have access to the ad, to the support by the CNC. Okay. You have the tax rebate. Only support the tax okay. rebate. Okay. So uh, okay. that's okay. too different. Or it's a, it's an official corporation, and with Germany it's very easy. Uh, and then uh, you have access to all the automatic and selective schemes uh, of CNC. So the, in that case, Cinema du Monde, but also the French German mini treaty which is uh, specific money for co-productions between France and Germany. Uh, but so it depends on the project. But if you, if you shoot in France, uh, probably your best bet is to go to tax rebate. OK. Uh, a personal question. The Golden Palm award-winning film, The Square, is a half French production. Um, did they receive, were they part of the CNC program, or did they go otherwise? The, the Square. Yeah. The square. Uh, the Square applied to uh, Cinema du Monde, uh, which and the committee made a tragic mistake. They didn't support it. Oh, okay. uh, so we missed the Palme d'Or. Uh, <laughs> we got it once with another film uh, uh, by Noé Bidjetchelan. But the Square, well, but it, also the Square, it's, uh, the French share of the film was uh, quite low, and it was uh, also what we called uh, a financial reproduction. In fact, there was no real French spending. There was, priv there was money uh, put by the French producer, but there was, in fact, nothing was made in France. So if they had gotten the money, they would have had to make a small part of the prosperation in France. But as they didn't, they did nothing in France. Uh, and it's not compulsory because the square, it's a bit, compli a bit technical, the square is, is no official co-production, but uh, um, in the framework of the European Convention of uh, for co-production, which allows purely financial co-productions, meaning that the, the, the minority producer uh, doesn't have any obligation of spending uh, in its in its country. So, in fact, this film was uh, was shot in Sweden with a Swedish cast, a Swedish crew, uh, and well, there was also some German money, some French money. Uh, but uh, so officially, it's also a French film because it was certified by CNC uh, in the framework of the European Convention as a French film. Uh, it means that uh, film has also access to the French producer has access to automatic money uh, by the CNC, uh, proportional to the success of the film in France. So as the film was a success, it got Palme d'Or, so it, uh, it sold a lot of tickets in France. So it it gave automatic money to the producer, uh, to French producer, to finance his, his following film. It's a very, it's a very sophisticated uh, French system. You had mentioned just before that uh, the, the percentages of films that go through some of these systems do end up at the Cannes Film Festival which I think for yeah. a lot of people would be a great honor and would <laughs> in many ways help financing yeah. in itself. It's a bit of a catch 22, but I think a lot of people wonder, I'm wondering, do you feel if we make the extra effort to connect ourselves with these schemes that that actually does raise the chances of being an official selection? Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I'm not sure to have. A, what I'm saying is we make a point. film. Yes. Goes really well. Yes. Looks really good. And it's through France. Does this aid in the festival itself uh, accepting it because you've designed it in a way that that our French partners are, are more privy to understand what is the most acceptable styles of the festival? Well, one thing is sure that, uh, as you might have noticed, there were a lot of French films in Cannes. <laughs> so purely French films, but also co-productions. And it's also because the French producers and uh, 
more globally, the French professionals are very well connected to the Cannes Film Festival. So it's quite logical that uh, there are a lot uh, of, uh, of co-productions, not only for French film, but co-productions. And we have, among all the films in Cannes this year, I think uh, there are something like, uh, I think more, uh, half of the films are in fact either French or French co-productions. Uh, some others are not co-productions, but good tax rebate, yeah. like the Wes Anderson film or, or Still, Stillwater. Stillwater also. Um, and also something very important is that a lot of uh, films, even though they are not French or even not French co-productions, are sold by French sale agents. Because as you, you know, in art house films, the French sale agents are very present. They have a quite a very high position to sell uh, European films, even extra-European films. Uh, and uh, I think this year the figure is something like 60% or 65% of the films present in Cannes this year are sold by French sale agents. Uh, and so that's a very important point also because um, they are very well connected to yes to to, to Cannes Film Festival and uh, it uh, w when you work and more globally when you, when you work with uh, with France, France is the country for art house films because we have the network of uh, movie theaters with six thousand screens and uh, and uh, a great diversity of of uh, movie theaters and a great diversity of films in these movie theaters. We release something like 700 films every year, different films of a lot, lot of nationalities. Uh, so it's a market which is very different from the other European markets. It's more, more diverse. It's bigger because normally uh, when it's not a period of COVID, uh, we sell more than two, 200 million tickets. So it's the biggest market in France, in, in Europe, but also um, the, the 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 role of the sale agents is very important and uh so uh and when you, you work with french producers normally you also work with french sale agents one question. Thank you. does brexit affect any of the schemes in france uh so far so good no <laughs> no no it's the same it's the same for the tax rebates count as a European and cultural test and technical test. But in fact, there are as far as shootings of British films in France, there were a lot. Okay. In terms of co-production, there are a few. <laughs> uh, because the UK, so far, is the UK hasn't co-produced a lot with, uh, with Europe. Mm. So it might be a kind of paradox that maybe after the Brexit, uh, the UK will co-produce more with Europe. We hope so. But uh, in fact, uh, we co-produce a lot with, uh, with all the neighboring countries, with Germany, with Italy, with Spain, with Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, but n not a lot with the UK. Uh... Yeah, I was wondering uh, what are the uh, requirements for Cinema du Monde? For an American company, for instance, do you do a selection through the script, the dossier, or is it just an automatic help once a company? What are the requirements? How do you do your selection? So, there are no real requirements. The only requirement is to have a French co-producer okay. and to send, which will send uh, online a, a file uh, in French with a full script, uh, notes of intent. Uh, and then uh, the, the selection is made by a committee uh, of professionals, French-speaking professionals, not only French, but French-speaking, uh, which has been shared uh, for five years by Charles Tesson, the head of the Critics Week in Cannes. Mm -hmm. uh, he will step out uh, next uh, week to be replaced by uh, a lady called Prune Anglaire, who was the former head of the La Rochelle Film Festival, very famous art house film festival in France. Mm. Uh, and uh, in the committee, there are directors, producers, distributors, set agents, film critics. Uh, and uh, it's very selective. It's uh, between 10 and 15 percent of the films which are selected. So it's really on artistic quality mainly. The, the main criteria is artistic quality of the, of the script and also the previous work of the director. 
Uh, we also ask the committee to take into account other aspects, for instance, the implications of the French producer, because this implication is very diverse. Sometimes, you know, the French producer was found uh, two days before the application. He just uh, translated the script and he did nothing else, and he will not do a lot of things. And sometimes, he or she was implicated from the very beginning. It was a project co-developed by the French producer, uh, and they have been working on it with uh, the, the director for three, four years. So we are more interested in this kind of project, which was really co-developed, than uh, by films which, uh, for which a French producer was uh, just found uh, at the very last moment. And uh, but. With the committee, I mean, we in the CNC, we don't interfere in the choices. We might give some advice, but in, in, uh, at the end of the day, they, they really choose what they want. Uh, and it's uh, and they make good choices because, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, one third of the films uh, which are uh, supported uh, end up at the Cannes Film Festival and another third uh, ends up at uh, Venice or Berlin or Locarno. Uh, so I think it's a very good result. And then these films, although they are art house films, they sell tickets in France. Uh, and we had a lot of films that we supported, which sold uh, between 100,000 and uh, 700,000 tickets in France, but also in, uh, in they sold tickets in other countries. So uh, some of the films are really niche films, uh, you know, first feature film by a young uh, African director. So in that case, uh, uh, you sell fewer tickets, probably, but it's important to uh, encourage the, the, the emerging directors. Uh, but uh, we also had a very good uh, festival and uh, business results by uh, for films by young directors. The first film, uh, remember, for example, Mustang by Denise Arguven, a film which was nominated for the Oscars. Uh, and it was the first feature film by a young female uh, French-Turkish director, and it sold uh, seven uh, seven hundred thousand uh, tickets in France, and uh, uh, more than two millions, uh, I think, all over the world. Okay, thank you. I have two questions. I'm from New, Z New, New Zealand. Yes. I'm just going to be clear. So the spend in France with crew, it could be bringing a DOP to New sure, Zealand, and sure. that's that's counted yes, as, as first expenses. If if, okay. the, if the DOP is paid by the French producer, uh -huh. even though the shooting is in New Zealand, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. And the other question is, what, what it gets a bit complicated because of the rebates in the different countries. If I want to involve another country like Germany or Italy, or does that change anything if there's more than two involved? It's more complicated for you. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, yeah. for sure. And, uh, <laughs> The way you you split uh, you split the expenses and then uh, with uh, respecting the the constraints that you might have from the different financing sources, especially the the national and regional funds because they require spending on the territory. Right. So the true. Co combination of that might yeah. be very complicated. Complicated. Yeah. And the more countries uh, you have, yeah, the I more complicated two, it is. But, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm just and checking. with New Zealand, as I said, we have a cooperation agreement, although it's an old one, and we would like to, by the way, to renew it. But it's possible to to have official co-productions between New Zealand and France. Yeah. Uh, okay. There was uh, this documentary by uh, Thomas Piketty, uh, which was shown in Cannes, I think, two years ago. Uh, okay. Which was a 50-50 uh, cooperation between uh, New Zealand and France. Mm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Is the application open all year round, or are there one or two times in the year that you have four, to send in? Four times. Four times. Yeah, every every quarter. And normally, it's uh, between the first and the tenth day uh, of the month in uh, March, June, um, September, and December. So we are we have four rounds every year. So, for instance, uh, they the producers applied uh, in June. And the committee will uh, meet in uh, September for first election. They make a pre-choice. Uh, 
And then one month after, in October, they will make the final choice. And one thing that is very important that I didn't mention for Cinema du Monde is that we have two subcommittees. Uh, as a matter of fact, we now have three. So we have, in fact, for pre-production uh, support, we have two subcommittees. One is only for young directors, first and second films. Okay, so they are not in competition with uh, Michael Haneke or Nani Moretti or uh, anybody of this uh, standard. Uh, and the other is for more experienced directors. So we uh, we make sure that half of the support go to young directors. It's very important for us to to support the young directors. And then. Um, uh, for post-production uh, post support, post-shooting support, uh, we have just set up a special committee because before it was uh, it was mixed up with uh, with the first and se second subcommittee. So now we have a third subcommittee, which is only in charge of watching the films which were shot. Uh, they see these rough cuts and they decide on the post-production supports. Yeah. Yes. Hi, I have a quick. I'm not sure if this was um, discussed. So we're putting together a co-production between France and Australia. Um, it's a considerable budget, about five to six million dollars. I'm wondering how much money would I be able to access out of France, or, or is it determined by the number of days that I'm shooting? So it depends if you go to tax rebate or or official co-production. Official co-production. <laughs> Official co-production. So, uh, if it's a minority French, you're going to shoot uh, in how, how long? Well, the, the, the 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 lead characters is is French. Um, it's actually based on a true story of a, of one of my friends who was shot by uh, two police officers, who later find out were on cocaine. And so I'm telling that story. So it's a, the the main character, the the POV will be a French actor. Um, so I would say, I would say the majority of the shooting will be in Australia. So in that case, you know, it will be like 2080, I would say, to answer your question. As far as public money is concerned, you will not get a lot because what you can get is Cinema du Monde. It's very selective. And then you will have, uh, I would say, maximum 200,000 euros. OK, OK. And then. Of course, depending on on the notoriety of the of the director and the, the cast, you might get private money in France, but so uh, from uh, from a distributor for like a from a distributor. station, uh, yeah. Okay, but public money not because we don't have automatic money for uh, minority reproductions. Okay, okay. To make it clear. So uh, in that case, in fact, if you want to be sure to have automatic money, it's, you see this lady. So you're saying, uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't hear that. If you, if you want to have automatic money, because, you know, our selective scheme is very selective, okay? So, of course, to be on the safe side, if you want to be sure to have money, so in that case, it's automatic money, and automatic money, you see this lady. When you say automatic money, you mean the 40% rebate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for, 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 for this kind of budget, this kind of film, I think your, your best bet is to go for tax rebate. No, I think so. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, five day minimum. Yeah. Oh yeah, we would shoot five days. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, uh, our the the choice that France has made for co-production is to go to art house films, and so we have something like 400 applications to Cinema du Monde every year, and we can support only 40 to 45. So it's very, very selective. Thank you. So either, yeah. Oh, you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK. So uh, uh, if, if, if it's uh, um, the, the, the choice, we, we have tax rebate, which is more industrial support, in fact, and economic support to encourage spending in France, okay? And Cinema du Monde, it's more artistic, it's a support to art house films and, uh, generally speaking, low budget films or medium budget films. 
encore cinq minutes. Cinq minutes. Thank you. I, I have also two questions. One uh, regarding the, um, the first time or second time directors. Um, how is this considered? I mean, if the director has had, let's say, three films in cinemas in Austria, in my case, um, is it still a young director? No, in your definition. So no. it's it, it, it's not the nationality of the release. It is so it's not in France that you have. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. And second question um, for this sp specific co-production between Austria and France. Um, um, maybe it's a bit more technical. So what is uh, what would be for the French producer the uh, the best approach? Would it be Cinéma du Monde or would it be um, Avant sur recette? The film is shot in French. Uh, partly, partly. It's a documentary. Okay. Uh, well, for documentary, the, the language is of no. Uh, we, we don't care about the about the language, so it means that it, it can try avant sur recette, where the you can get more money. Uh, because the, for the for documentary, the the average uh, might be something like uh, one hundred and fifty thousand something like that for documentary. Uh, but you can also go to, to Cinema du Monde. So you cannot apply to both at the same moment. But normally in that case, you can try Avant sur recette. And if you don't get it, then go to Cinema du Monde. But depending really on the, the subject and the, 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 the location of the shooting and so on, we might advise you to go either to Avant sur recette or to Cinema du Monde. Because Avant sur recette, it's really more for French film or, 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 f or French speaking films uh, um, uh, or films by French speaking directors from Belgium, from uh, it, but it depends really. Uh, okay, okay, merci. I have a follow up question. Sorry, is there a minimum you have to spend in? Um, I know you said five days shooting, but is there a minimum amount of money that we have to spend in France? in order to get the 40%. Ah. You have to spend 250,000 euros or at least half of your budget if it's uh, lower than uh, 250,000. And for the VFX bonus, it's more than 2 million euros. I'm sorry. VFX, uh, if you want the 10% of VFX, the VFX bonus, 10%, okay. you have to spend more than 2 million euros on VFX related expenses to get the 40 for the whole eligible expenses on your project then after that. Okay, thank you. Maybe um, the last, the last question. Uh, there was just something interesting that came up just out of curiosity. Who are, what is a young director? Is it by age? Is it by first film, yeah. first released film? What is the definition of a no, young director? Yeah. To, to the first subcommittee is for directors uh, who are gonna make their first or second feature film. So they have made maximum only one before. So that's the first subcommittee, that's what we call young directors, so it's not their age, it's just, it's more their experience. If they have made a maximum of one so far, so if they apply for their first or second, they go to this first sub subcommittee. Otherwise, they go to the se second subcommittee with the more experienced directors. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, we have more applications by young directors. Uh, we have something like 55 or 60 per session for young directors and approximately 35 to 40 for the for the more experienced directors. Uh. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you for to our audience for having been with us.